my old music. And uh, so I was searching, and then it was in just a few years later uh, I'd heard of, of Lenny. And as a matter of fact, t y'all give Tim a, a hand. Tim writes in the sound booth. He, he travels with Lenny. <laughs> Tim, when I heard Tim was here, I, I wasn't with him yesterday. I was with my grandkids. And so uh, when I heard Tim was here, my, my, he, he always used to term a baby leap. Uh, you know, there's certain people in life that makes my baby jump, you know. And Tim and I have known each other since I was probably 19, 20 years old. I got born again at uh, a church called Faith Tabernacle. At that time, was on Cherry Hill in Florence, Alabama. And the, and the church is now known as Faith Church, in, the, in which Lenny is a resident artist of that church. And so there's this deep connections that we've got from Roots and way back. They know where I came from. You know, many times I'll mention HD up here on the front row. H is from, well, you went to Bradshaw. In, in Florence, and, uh, uh, and bought whiskey from my grandma, who was a bootlegger. Yeah, so we have this connection, you know. And so uh, when, when we talk about, you know, roots and, and going back home, uh, you know, it's a, it's a neat thing, you know. So, I, so that's why I like to keep H near and, and uh, excited about having Tim here and, and Lenny. And I, I know we're on air now, and there's a lot of people that have already um, called me and texted me and said, Pastor, you know, we can't get there. But we're going to watch uh, this morning on HolyWild.tv. And to those watching us right now on HolyWild.tv, we welcome you. Would you all welcome those that are watching us? We appreciate you doing that. You know, and, and being a, a, a part of the little country church, you know, again, we, we're bigger than this in the sense that we have two churches. But the issue to me is influence. And uh, no one uh, that I, I guess I personally know that has influenced more in the area of worship and music and uh, in connection. Uh, I was telling him over 20 years, I've used his song to tell y'all to sit down. Now, I've probably done his song a very disservice, you know, that it would, it would help you sit down because it ought to make you get up. Amen. Would you welcome Lenny LeBlanc? Well, you know, Pastor Jerry and I do come from the same uh, place, and I'm sure we've got equal amount of dirt on each other, so we'll just let that just kind of slide off. <laughs> but um, I know that he, he's, God has used him to do a great work uh, here. I can just sense the, the Lord's presence here. When I first walked in, it's amazing. You guys just have uh, just such a, a joy in, in you, you know, and that's the way it should be. Man, Living for God and just walking in His ways are just, um, it's amazing what, what God can do in a life that is surrendered to Him. Uh, just wanted to make a clarification so y'all don't think I was in a fight yesterday. My, my left eye had surgery on it last week, and uh, <clears throat> I've been suffering from double vision for like 20 years, you know. As I, um, the doctor said I might have injured it in a schoolyard fight or something, but my eyes were just, they weren't right, and I would see like one image right here and one image right here. So it was just really weird, like trying to watch TV. And, and finally, they perfected the surgery to, to, to fix it. And so consequently, there's some, some good parts about that and some bad parts. Now the crowds are, you know, half as many <laughs> when I go to places. <laughs> um, I've only got one truck. <laughs> I've got half as many friends as I thought I had. <laughs> But the good part is my wife does not have a twin sister, and I'm not married to her. <laughs> That's a good part. <laughs> I got a good wife, but I don't want two of them. <laughs> but um, anyway, it's just so great to be here with you guys. Um, I want to do a new song for you this morning that I'm pretty uh, excited about. It's called Joy. And, um, you know, it just kind of talks about how that God can be our joy in the middle of of such despairing circumstances, you know, that he can just come in and be that peace and just walk you through it. And so uh, it's kind of a little funky kind of thing. Where I come from, we, we do a lot of funky kind of music, and so it kind of falls in line with that style. It's called Joy. <laughs> Be alone, rain or shine, I got 
the J O I O O O O O And step by step and day by day like an old blind beggar just feeling my way I can't see every bend in the road and when the weight's too heavy you lighten my load and give me joy of my despair so good to know somebody cares you give me hope i'm never gonna be alone rain or shine i got the j o i oh 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 hey yeah oh 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 every storm you give me faith to see the clouds all roll away i know that i can trust in you cause every time you always do what you do you give me joy in the middle of my despair so good to know somebody cares you give me Never gonna be alone Rain or shine You give me joy In the middle of my despair So good to know that Somebody cares You give me hope I'm never gonna be alone Rain or shine Oh, rain or shine I got to change Oh, why? to sing a, a worship song. It's just one of my favorite songs. Um, I didn't write it, but I just love this song. And I know that you guys know it, so let's just sing it together. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. And everyone needs forgiveness kindness of a savior the hope of nation savior he can move the mountain my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save salvation he rose and he conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave oh yes he did oh yes he did so Lord take me as you find all of my fears and failures and fill my life again oh lord i give my life to follow everything i believe in now i surrender i surrender lord i surrender oh savior he can move the mountain my god is mighty say he is mighty to say forever author of salvation he rose and he conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave Let the whole world see that we're 
singing for the glory of the risen King Jesus. Shine your light in, let the whole world see that we're singing for the glory of the risen King. Oh, Savior, He can move my mountains. My God is mighty to save. Is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and he conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Oh, Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. conquered the grave he rose and he conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave he rose and he conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave God thank you that you rose again Lord We worry and we fear and we serve the one that conquered death. It's like, what do we have to fear, really? Um, one evening, a lot of times, I'm a songwriter at heart and uh, just happened to be a recording artist at the same, thing, same time, but I'm really a songwriter. I love writing songs. And um, late one night, uh, you know that state of mind when you're sort of dozing in and off to sleep. <laughs> a lot of times I'll do that and I'll be maybe watching TV or whatever and I'll have my guitar in my hands. And sometimes I'll come up with a little idea of, of sorts and um, I started singing this little line. If I was a rainbow, I don't know, I'd show my colors for you. You know, what would you do if you were a rainbow? How would you relate to God? You know, you'd show your colors for him. So I ran upstairs and woke my wife up and she got mad. I said, honey, honey, what do you think about this song? She said, oh, it's just kind of strange, you know. I said, yeah, you're right. But <laughs> anyway, it's one of my favorite songs. It's a love song, just a thank you to God because I'll share my story with you and I have so much to be thankful for.
take away the stars at night. Your faithful word will always be my life. Beautiful, such a miracle that you would give up heaven just for me. And all I want to do is fall more in love with you. This world doesn't own me anymore. One thing that I do know for If I was a rainbow, I'd show my colors for you. And if I was a songbird, I would sing my song for you. And if you take the sun and the moon and take away the stars at night, your faithful word will always be my God's good. Everybody's got a story. And everybody's got a song. And everyone's a little different. But we've all gone wrong. Then the Savior came. And it took the blame, it changed everything. Then the Savior came, and he took the blame, it changed everything. Boy, now I can sing, oh, I can sing about his forgiveness. I can praise him till the sun goes is 
It's not often I get to share my story in a setting like this, so I'm thankful that I get to do it this morning, because we all have one, but it's not a story until you share it, until you tell it, right? So um, I started playing music at the age of 15. I grew up in Daytona Beach, Florida, on the East Coast out there, and we used to go surfing every day after school, and so my friend and I, he had a car, so I, I was sort of dependent on him, so we went to the beach, and came home and stopped by his house and his little brother and several of his little buddies were sitting around in the living room and they were playing songs from the radio you know like the Rolling Stones, Beatles and they were we were just listening to them you know because they were pretty good you know and so we were listening and his little brother looked up at us and said why don't one of you guys come over here and sing and we looked at each other like yeah right are you kidding us <laughs> you know we're not singers you know we're surfers <laughs> and so um my friend was really shy, and they just kept kept after us. So I just went over and just at, on a dare, you know, just for the heck of it, you know. And so I knew the songs that were on the radio. I think one of them was "House of the Rising Sun," not a great church song, but um, you know, I started singing it, and they and I got into it a little bit, and they looked at me really funny, and they said, "Wow, you sound good." I said, "Really?" They said, "Yeah, we let's put a band together and and enter the talent show at school." So this we're in junior high, you know. I said, talent show? You think I've got talent? He said, yeah. And so I didn't know what I was getting myself into. There's about 300 people in that cafeteria in high, at the junior high. And so we did those two songs. And, folks, I was, I'd never been in front of anybody doing anything. And I, ha I was so terrified. I had my hands in my pockets and my back to the audience. I was singing to the band <laughs> like we did at practice. You know, I was like, I couldn't face the people. And somehow, some way, we won second place. There was a little kid with a snare drum that was cuter than us, and so he won first place. And, and then they really got excited, and they said, you need to buy a bass. We need to put a band together and do this for real. And I thought, what's a bass? I had no idea what a bass even was, you know. And so I said, okay. So I went down to Eckerd's Drug Store and got a job washing dishes and saved $150 and bought a Fender Precision Bass. Didn't have an amplifier. Um, I would borrow things from people and never had any music lessons. I can't read music. Even if you put a gun to my head, I couldn't read music. And I just learned by ear and just watching other people, you know, and before long we were, uh, you know, playing in the little clubs and teen clubs, and then I played in the drinking clubs, and my dad would say, Lenny, when are you going to get a real job? And I'd work about, you know, six hours on the weekend and make just about as much as him, and he'd work in the grocery store all week, and he thought, well, there might be something to this music, you know, and so it became my passion. It really, it was, it was, the, it was my God. I worshipped it. I just loved it and just fell in love with it and just eat, eat it, ate it and breathed it. And I said, I need to move to a place where they, where they make records, you know. And so I moved to Muscle Shoals, Alabama. And that's where just tons of music was recorded. Sing, songs like, I'm going to wait till the midnight hour and going to knock on wood. You know, all these great songs. I mean, 50 ways to leave your lover. Still not a great church song, but <laughs> just trying to make a point. You know, all the Bob Seger stuff, the Main Street and Against the Wind and God, Rod Stewart. I could just go on and on. The Rolling Stones did Brown Sugar there. I mean, just unbelievable. Week after week, these major artists would be there. 
So I moved there, and uh, after about a year, I began playing recording sessions I, as a bass player. I played on a lot of big records. Then people found that I could sing, and I started singing backgrounds on a lot of, like, all the Mac Davis records, uh, just tons of stuff. Hank Williams Jr., Roy Orbison, he cut one of my songs. It was like, and then I was there for about a year and a half, and I started writing songs, because that was my passion. I really wanted to write songs, began to meet great songwriters. I wrote these two songs, and the next month I had a record deal on Atlantic Records. It was like, it was like crazy. And... Um, then I teamed up with a friend of mine. We had a duo called LeBlanc and Carr. And in 1978, we put this record out, and it was a world, it was a worldwide hit, huge hit. I mean, I go overseas a lot, and everywhere I go, I, sometimes I sing it, and people know it. I don't care if we're in the Philippines or Singapore or wherever. They know this song. So all you old folks will know this. You'll know who you were dating. <laughs> might, be, might be good, might be bad. I don't know. <laughs> and... All you young people, if you work in a place where they have elevators, you'll know it. <laughs> or if you if you like listen to the oldie stations, or you in Walmart, they played in Walmart and Walgreens, you know, on the on the tape loop. Anyway, um, we'll see if you know it. Think about winter when I was with her, and the snow's falling down, warm by the fire. Love being by her when there's no one else around, and I'm falling. Oh, I'm falling. I'm falling in love with you. Do I remember that? So, um, four of y'all. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, you know, so we, we went on the road and we were touring with Leonard Skinner when the plane went down. We were opening all those shows. Um, we had the same manager as the Rolling Stones and Leonard Skinner and, and a band called 38 Special. And we were doing great. We were... Uh, I did all the big TV shows, but back then, Bandstand, um, um, Midnight Special, and Dinah Shore, and Merv Griffin Show, we did all that stuff, and everything was going really well, and until I was uh, off of a tour one night, and uh, laying in my bed, and um, a friend of mine called me that had been to Vietnam, he was like a, an older brother to me, he got back from Vietnam, and he became a drug smuggler. Drug smugglers are different than a dope dealer. They, they have blo boats and planes and ship captains working for them when they deal in large quantities of drugs. And he called and said, Lenny, I got saved. <coughs> he said, I'm going to heaven, and I want you to be there with me. Are you saved? And I thought, man, just when things are going good. <laughs> I was not looking for God. I mean, God was the last thing on my agenda. And I had left my family, a three-year-old daughter and a wife, about six years earlier because my career was uh, my God. And nothing would get in the way of it. I was eaten up with guilt, but my selfishness outweighed my guilt, if that makes any sense to you. And I um, was just trying to suppress that, you know. And um, something in his voice just really, really touched me. He said, I want to send you a book. I said, okay, whatever. So he sent me a Bible. And a little book about the end times. It was like, what about the time that the late great planet Earth came out? And there was a few books that had come out then. And this book, after every chapter, had a prayer. You could pray and ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and forgive you of your sins and be born again. And I would read that prayer after every chapter. I must have got saved 18 times that week. <laughs> but I didn't, you know, I began really as what spoke to me was the scriptures. When I started reading the Bible and, and realized God would forgive me and he loved me despite of all the things I'd done. I was 31 years old. I'd sinned a lot. I needed forgiveness for a lot, you know. And it was like such a weight lifting off my shoulders. But I was, I was ignorant of anything spiritual, so I didn't know what I was supposed to feel. I thought maybe there was like going to be a light coming to my bedroom or like on the 700 Club, you know, like an angel would appear. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect, you know. Hadn't been to a church yet. And... Um, <clears throat> But my outlook on things began to change. My heart began to change. I would go out on the front porch, folks, and I'd look across the street, and I'd say, those trees have never been that green. I'm just, I'm just saying, they have never been that green. 
my friends would come over and they'd say, come on, let's go get high. I said, man, if I get any more, any higher, I don't know what, I, what I'll do. I said, and they'd look at me and they'd say, what's wrong with you? What's, what's going on with you? They could tell it in my face. And I didn't even know how to explain it to them. I said, all I know is God's real. I, I just know he's real. <laughs> and, um, you know, then I went to a church and, and uh, met all these other people that had had the same experience as me. And I had a dilemma because I was back to being a single artist again, and I was signed to Capitol Records this time in California. I'd done one pop record for them, and I was scheduled to do another one in my contract, and so I was trying to write the songs for that record right about this time. Well, a songwriter writes from his heart, and so I would start the song out, and it'd be a, a love song, a pop song. By the time we get to chorus, it'd be about Jesus. Yep. <laughs> Capitol's not going to want these Jesus songs. And they didn't. And I, I called my manager in L.A. I said, do you think they'd let me out of this record deal? And it was really quiet on the phone. He said, you want out of your record deal? Most people would give their right arm to have a record deal. And I said, I don't know how to explain it. I just don't have the desire to do those songs anymore. And it wasn't like, okay, now you're a good little Christian boy. You can't do pop songs anymore. It wasn't that at all. It was like God changed my desires. I lost all the hunger for that. All I wanted to do was write songs about this God. Changed my life. And I didn't care. Uh, if I'd made another record again, I really didn't care. Because the peace of God is worth so much more. <laughs> and to have the peace of God in your life is everything. <laughs> and you know, we struggle for, uh, I mean, we. When I say we struggled, we didn't really struggle, struggle. We never missed the bill, but I sold a lot of stuff. I'd had a lot of stuff accumulated, you know, cars, motorcycles, and guitars. I got down to about one guitar, <laughs> no motorcycle, no truck. I was riding a 10 speed there for a while, but, um, you know, God was so faithful. And uh, like I say, we never missed the bill. I kept my little house. I was able to keep my little house. We struggled for about five or six years, and uh, I never dreamed that God would, would give me success in Christian music. I thought Christian music is not even a genre. This was 1981. It was like, you know, the Imperials and people like that, you know. It's like it wasn't even contemporary genre much of anything. I remember a year before I got saved, I'd sang on Amy Grant's first record, and I was not even a believer. I just did it as a favor to a friend. And I just saw Amy for the first time a couple months ago and uh, thanked her because I can't believe we'd never crossed paths before then because those songs were like seeds in my life. I know God used them in my life, you know, to bring me as part of my journey. And um, she said, we couldn't even believe you'd even sing on the record. And I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, what, a, what an amazing thing how God just leads you in different directions and you know, down the roads that always lead to him. And um, that I never dreamed that I would write songs that would be sung around the world and translated into many languages, you know. And I even had a number one country record back in 96 that I never even tried to get recorded. I wrote this song for my wife and a band called Sawyer Brown, a country band. They, they had a number one on this in 96. Uh, you got to treat her right, understand. She's your woman and you're her man. Tell her that you need her like the desert needs a rain. If you treat her right, show her you care. When you need her, she'll be there. Like an island in the storm, a beacon in the night. If you love her, treat her right. And it's just a song I wrote for my wife, you know, and I put it on a Christian record, and somehow they heard it, and it became their favorite record they listened to on the bus and they ended up cutting two songs off my CD and never even I never even tried to get them recorded that's what God can do when you don't even try if you just leave it in his hands you know and 
I've been so blessed, and, and Jesus really is the hero of my story. Um, but I want to sing a little song for you uh, before we go on. It's about growing up down on the east coast of Florida. It's called The Bridge. Back in the 50s, all those bridges were made of wood, and uh, we would walk across them, and big truck would come by, and the whole bridge would shake, and it's... Uh, uh, talks about that bridge and later on the bridge of success that I crossed and in the end it talks about uh, the bridge that we all need to cross when I was a boy growing up down on the Fishing with my brother is what I remember most. Now we told stories and dreamed a lot on the way down to that favorite spot. And there it was, so tall and gray. We were scared to death, but we couldn't wait to cross the bridge to the other side. place we were sure was paradise but that bridge rumbled and it swayed and even though we were afraid we still crossed over that bridge later it was time to leave my home traded my school days for a life out on the road now they said I had what it took things you can't learn from a book and if I just did what they say I could go all Cross the bridge to the other side to the place I was sure was paradise. But that bridge rumbled and it swayed. He even said I have it made when I crossed over. God's been so faithful to me, but you know, it was like, <clears throat> you know that scripture where it talks about the merchant that sells all he had and buys this field because there's a precious pearl in it and he sold everything. That's what it was like for me. And it wasn't difficult for me to leave all that stuff because I saw God for who he was. I saw how beautiful he was and 
how amazing it was. And it was like I'd been swimming in this muddy mud hole. And then I looked across the street, and it was this crystal blue stream. And it was like, there was like a no-brainer for me. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. And I think if we just, sometimes we need to see the value of God, the worth of God. A lot of times we don't see how much God's worth in our lives and how much he's done for us. And I think if we realized that more, it'd be a lot easier to leave some things behind, you know? I mean, I think about that, that lady that broke that jar of perfume over Jesus' feet, and they all got mad at her. That bottle of perfume was, was a costly thing. It cost more than, like, a stonemason in today's times would make, a year of wages of a stonemason. That's probably forty or $50,000 in today's world. And she broke that jar. And she saw how, how worthy he was. And she didn't even bat an eye. She probably saved that all her life. That was probably something that she maybe inherited. Who knows? But, man, we just need to see the worth of God, how great he is. And the things that we're going through will look so small. You know, a lot of people bash Joel Osteen, and I know he's, he's got his faults like the rest of us and his downfalls, and he's not perfect. And, um, one thing I like about what he says, though, is he's always saying, you know, see God bigger than your problems. And that's, that's something we need to grab a hold of, you know, because he is so much bigger. You were crucified and laid behind a stone. You lived to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me. Above all, sing it with me. Above all powers, above all powers, all kings, above all kings, all nature, above all nature, and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. For the world began above all kingdoms, above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the There's no way to measure what you're worth. You were crucified and laid behind the stone. You lived to die, rejected and alone, just like a rose, trampled on. took the fall and thought of me above all, just like a rose trampled on the ground, you took the fall and thought of me.
Christian like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. And I could search for all eternity long and find there is a search for all eternity long and find that there is none, no, not one, there is none, there is none like you. we love your presence we love each other God because we see you in each other Lord. so Lord I pray for my brothers and sisters here God that we would just get a bigger picture of you Lord a bigger vision of you Lord and of your worth God of how amazing you are God through the ages Lord in ourselves in our families God in our friends Lord, remind us of where you brought us from, God. Remind us of the greatness you've done in us, Lord. And Lord, we just surrender our hearts fresh to you, God, this morning, Lord. Do, do your will in us, God. Make us, Lord, more like you, God. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you all so much for letting me be here. With your eyes closed for a moment, your heads bowed, I do sense his presence. I do sense it. Tuesday night, I told us out of Ephesians that we're saved from the wrath of God, saved by grace, and saved for good works. And that's what God has done in our lives. And as you've heard Brother Lenny share, it happened in his life and is happening in his life and will continue to happen. But he gave up uh, so little to gain so much. And so with you this morning, and I, I don't know all of you here, so I just have to ask you before we walk out of this place, you say, Pastor, uh, I, I'm in need of God. I'm in need of a life change. I, I need God to step in with his grace, turn some things around. Look, your life could be going kind of bad right now, and I tell you, he could make it better. It could be like Lenny's. It was going great. And, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, oftentimes when we turn to God, all hell breaks loose. But it's worth the hell to get to heaven. Amen. And so if you say, Pastor, will you pray for me this morning? Just slip your hand up and back down. Amen. All right, there's hands all over the place. Would you hold them back up and we'll pray together. Lord Jesus, on this day, I receive you as my Savior. I thank you for your presence. It's all oh so sweet. Change my life. Be my Lord, my God, my King my Savior, and I thank you that from this day forward, I'm going to love you, I'm going to appreciate you, and I'm going to love those around me, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, come on, give God a praise in here, <laughs> hallelujah, Glory, glory, glory. Be, be seated for a moment, if you would. Uh, man, this is good this morning. Amen. I mean, extremely good. If I could get our servant leaders to come up for a moment. When, uh, when God takes a, a man like Lenny,
from a place of prominence. And then, and, and one of the things I've noticed about uh, Lenny over all the years that I've known him and, uh, and even from afar witnessed him is he's been a man of humility, uh, appreciation. Uh, Ronnie, I want you to talk with Lenny after service, if you would. Ronnie is our resident uh, wood maker. Uh, what you're sitting on, he built. I know you love wood. Uh, I know you're a furniture man. Uh, that was a part of your sustaining force during a time. And, and I think about Jesus. I, I said to you Tuesday, you know, all good works done for the glory of God. Uh, anything you do for the glory of God are, is good works. And that Jesus, long before he started ministry, for 30 years, he was a carpenter. There were people in Jerusalem that had a table by Jesus. They sat in chairs by Jesus. Uh, that, they, they had uh, things beside their bed, the little whatnots, you know, by Jesus. Who built that? That was Jesus. I don't know if he put his initials on it or what. But long before he was uh, stepped out and started doing miracles at age 30, Jesus was building things. And he's never quit building. Uh, he builds, you know, it's, it's, I love this phrase, it's better to build boys than it is to mend men. It's easier to catch us when we're young to help us through life than to build us and mend us when we get older. So, uh, for Lenny, one more time, would y'all give him a, a thank you for being here this morning? It was really good. Now, with those clapping hands, I want you to reach into your neighbor's wallet. <laughs> I want you to really appreciate, Lenny, this morning, not only with your tithe toward the house of God, but with your offerings. Uh, they're here for one day only. Uh, we're fortunate that he had a cancellation to get him in. Uh, Lenny, I think you know this was a, a pastor appreciation thing. To, oh, yeah. And so I do feel appreciated. Uh, anytime you get your friends together, it's a good thing. Give you some uh, quick announcements, guys. Thanksgiving service will be here. Uh, there'll be no Wednesday night service to New Caney. We're inviting New Caney over here for that Tuesday night to have a uh, Thanksgiving service. And then uh, so everybody can prepare for their Thanksgiving time. And then also coming up, we, we know that uh, we will be having a, a Christmas hold down time with Ken Holloway on the 13th of December. Amen, out at the ranch. Now, but on the 6th, you need to write this down, December the 6th, we're going to, guys, you know I've been in the Crosby area now since uh, 1986. So I've been in and out of here, you know, but when I was youth passing Channel View, I was uh, reminiscing with Debbie. She was with me in the old blue block auction building over here. She could tell you stories of snakes coming over the top of the rafters during the worship session, and the worship leader thought, there were angels above him because of the expression on the people's faces. And uh, it was a snake that moved across the rafter in that old building. And uh, I don't know, I guess we finally told him the truth later, but he thought it was all about him for that moment. Bless his heart. But a uh, snake went on. We never found the snake. We hunted for that snake, never found it. But it wasn't unusual. You know, we just, whatever we could do, we did. Uh, but when I've come by this building before, I, I said, Lord, it needed remodeling. And we did that. We remodeled this facility and made it, made it nice. But we got a few more things to do. On the 6th of December, which is a Saturday, we will have a family work day, which is for everyone that would like to come. Uh, we're going to eat breakfast at 8 o'clock. We're going to get a game plan. And we're going to light this church up. We're going to put lights, white lights around this building, down the side, uh, around the poles, over the sign. We're going to have a manger scene out over here without wise men. The wise men were not there. If you see a manger scene with wise men, you have my permission to steal the wise men in order to make it biblically correct. All right? If there's one thing I need you to do is just start getting a little more correct. So we're going to put that scene outside. And, uh, and so when folk drive by here, they know there's a church in town. Can I get an amen? Y'all feel good about that? All right. So uh, hopefully we'll get some, some things done around here and make, make this thing. Don't want folks to go, you know, I, we can't do that out in New Canaan. You got to drive in out there, but you can drive through over here. Yeah. Amen. So we want, we want to make, uh, each church has different strengths, and we want to use it for the advantage of God. Amen. 
You got your offering? Amen. As we, and by the way, if you lifted your hand a while ago, sincere in your heart, believing that God changed your life, and if you need any material that we've got, stop by our store in the back. Also in the back, Lenny has uh, CDs. Uh, one of my favorite CDs, Lenny, from years ago was Say a Prayer. Uh, do you still have that? Uh, it never goes with me. It never goes with you? I don't have any with me. Oh, you don't have any with you. Okay. I love that one, but Lenny has uh, some uh, uh, CDs. You know, this is one of those where you put on that Ken Holloway, David Huff, now Lenny LeBlanc. You know, mixture. So when you're on your scooter or your tractor or, or wherever you're at, you got some music to listen to. So, man, I love it. Those songs you sang, you, you wrote most of those songs. And we sing them. We sing these songs, and, and we got the songwriter here with us. Amen. As we give today, we're believing God for more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises. Finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, and pay off the church. Amen.